I'm Owen Bigland, this is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, let's talk about inflation and its impact moving forward on the Vancouver real estate market as far as pricing goes. And, and as well, I'll brush on the rental rates in Vancouver here uh, in the next come, uh, cu couple of years moving forward here. Because if you've been watching the news, of course, and I started blogging about this earlier this year as well as late last year, I started talking about how material costs during COVID, things like wood, lumber, glass, uh, rebar appliances had all been going up dramatically and now the last couple of months here it's been in the news you know the price of of uh, wood uh, framing wood and and uh, and drywall and plywood is up about a hundred percent here in the last three or four months there's a shortage and the prices have been skyrocketing and you know I've talked about this many times you know the price for real estate real estate values will always go up to inflation over time. Not in lockstep, but there's a number of things that will influence the long-term values of real estate. Uh, population inflows, interest rates, of course, is a big one. Supply and demand, uh, yeah, limitations in the city of Vancouver or other cities on what you can build, density, the NIMBYs, and then, of course, the actual cost to build the structures build a concrete high rise or build a single family home or build a wood frame townhouse. And I'm here to tell you in talking to some of my renovators as well as some small builders that you know these inflation costs that have been hitting building materials have not really been uh, uh, have not really been felt yet in the market. Uh, but it's coming. So it's something to be aware of, you know, when the developer is going to have to spend an extra 10, 15, 20,000 dollars to build a typical 1200 square foot wood frame townhouse. Guess what? Uh, as often said here, that uh, increase, maybe a little bit of it might be eaten by the developer, but it won't be much. Most of that will be passed on to the consumer, the purchaser in the form of a higher price per square foot. So in the last couple of months, you know, I've been getting emails, for instance, I've got a, a glass company in Richmond and I was tweeting about this a couple of months ago. With my rental units and with a lot of my investor clients, I often recommend that they get rid of the shower curtain and put in one of these nice pivoting glass units. They look a lot cleaner. It adds really nice value to the unit. And in November, uh, I'm a regular customer of this glass company and I send a lot of my investor uh, clients to them. They sent me an email in November with it announcing an 18% price increase across the board, 18%. Two weeks ago, I just got hit with another one saying that, hey, we're embarrassed about this, they are, but hey, we've got to pass on another 12% increase here. And they're basically announcing this because they just want people to know this isn't us trying to gouge you, this is our materials are skyrocketing right now. And a lot of this they import from other places, uh, I think the United States, but our input costs have gone up dramatically uh, for the glass we're purchasing and we've got to pass it on to the end consumer. So they've seen close to a 30% increase in these glass jobs just in the last seven or eight months. So this will be felt in the future prices moving down the road. You know, there's Again, lots of catalysts for what keeps real estate prices going, interest rates, supply and demand, but input costs are a huge part of it. I don't think that's really been reflected yet in the current prices, but it will. And it's not just glass, you know, it's wood, of course, uh, framing materials, roofing, decking, steel, rebar, concrete, labor. Uh, all these things are going up, if appliances, have also seen a fairly big surge. I had an email from one of my appliance companies that I deal with uh, about f uh, three months ago saying that across the board, a number of the appliance lines they carry are going up 8%. And if you wanna get in on the current pricing, lock in a, in a order now before the prices go up. So these price increases, double digit, will be reflected. The other thing I wanna talk about is current rental market in Vancouver. So during COVID here, over the last 13, 14 months, you know, there has been a, the rental market, especially for smaller studio units, I found, has been a little bit soft. Uh, rental rates in some cases have gone down. My rental rates have never gone down. I saw a story in the newspaper not long ago saying rental rates in downtown Vancouver went down 22%. 
I call, I'm, I'm skeptical about that. Uh, I never reduced any of my rental rates. I had two turnovers in the last 14 months here. Uh, one of the rents I kept the same because I, the tenant was only in there just over a year. I just had another tenant move into one of my Mount Pleasant units. Uh, it's been about two years since my last turnover. I got a 75% increase there. But here's the thing with that. As people know, current land, uh, tenants that are in there, there's a rent a freeze right now. That's going to be lifted later this year. You know, moving forward, I've done many blogs on this. You know, renting, uh, allowable rent increases used to be the CPI or inflation plus 2%. The NDP thought that was way too much, even though the landlord's costs are going up far more than that, probably double digits, property taxes, insurance, all that other stuff. But that moratorium is going to be lifted and it's going to go back to just the CPI. Well, I, looking now here, the main numbers for uh, inflation rate is running at something like 4.1%. So that's running high right now and where that will go down the road here might even go higher. So tenants should be aware of that. Once that moratorium is lifted, you could be looking at a 4, 4.5% increase. Would have been prior to the NDP more like about 6%. But those rent rates are going to go up. And remember, I don't raise the rents on my tenants. I just wait for my tenant to leave and then raise the rent back up to full market price. And sometimes that can be $150 or $200, depending on how long they stayed. But I think we're going to have a bit of a coiled spring effect here on rental rates moving into next year and beyond. Uh, I brushed on this a few times before. I was talking about this last fall and earlier this year how there has been a number of long-term investors, landlords, that because of the current government situation with the NDP and the city of Vancouver, have said enough is enough. Uh, you're taxing me to death. Uh, you've got a hate on for me at every corner. And I'm, I've made a lot of money on these units. Many of these investors, because I've been selling some of these units, have held these units for 10, 15, 20 years. And I think I'm gonna cash in. The market is strong right now. I'm gonna sell. So I've probably sold already this year probably seven of these investor units uh, and I can tell you uh, that I was talking about earlier this year, the majority of these buyers now, these new buyers, are not investors. Of the seven that I sold, five were principal residence buyers that were going to move into the unit. Two were investors, it was resold to another investor. So there, are, there is five units there that were in the rental pool that are going to be taken have now taken off the market and no longer available. So the coiled spring I talk about is when COVID ends, which it's going to, and the borders open up again and we start getting students coming in and we start getting immigration and we start getting contract workers coming in looking for furnished apartments for a year or two downtown or short-term accommodation or Airbnb gets going again, watch out. Uh, you know, our rental vacancy rate right now is still ultra low. I think it's hovering around 2%. Usually it hovers below 1%. So it's actually doubled here to about 2 Still very low though. But once the border opens, things start moving again. And the fact that a lot of rental units have been taken out of the rental pool over the last 12 or 13 months, investors decided to cash in, that's going to uh, uh, put further pressure, upwards pressure, on rental rates. And I think moving into 2022, by this time next year, let's say, uh, if you're uh, a tenant looking for a one bedroom that you can rent right now for let's call it 2100, I think you're gonna be looking more at 2250, 2300. Just a guess, but I do think rental prices rates are gonna start uh, edging up again. All the more reason why I'm not selling any of my property rental properties and I'm not planning on selling any of them for at least another five to 10 years. Uh, and why I am lately starting to work with a fair number of, of uh, newer investor clients that have been coming in. Um, they see the writing on the wall as well. I mean, the rental market is already extremely tight and I think it's gonna get tighter uh, moving into next year. But inflation is always with us. And you know, that's why when I tell people, you know, if you buy a condo today and in 20 years, uh, just hang on to it. In 20 years, if you paid 600 for it, it'll probably be worth about 1.2. And people often balk at that saying, it's gonna, how can it double and go to 1.2 in 20 years? Well, inflation is the big part. Uh, if you're running two and a half or 3% inflation, do the math. 
annualized inflation rate of 3% over 20 years is going to double that property. It's not going to go in lockstep. I always use the chocolate bar analogy. When I was a little kid growing up in Toronto, I'm an old guy, uh, chocolate bars were five cents. That's how old I am. Uh, in pretty quick order, they went to 10 cents, and I remember they went up to 15 cents, and I thought, this is getting outrageous. And the chocolate bars were a lot bigger than they are now. Then I remember in the mid-80s, inflation hit, and the price of a chocolate bar went up to uh, the audacity to charge uh, 25 cents. That's inflation. You know, the current $1.50 we're paying for a chocolate bar, uh, 20 years from now, we'll probably be paying 7 or $8. Sounds crazy, but that's the, the, what inflation does uh, on prices over 15, 20, 25 years. I'm Old Big Line. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.